we need to cut the military budget. Yes. And the easiest way to do that is to end our endless wars. We have been at war for almost 20 years now. Our society cannot continue to function continuously at war. Now, one way of Massachusetts peace action that we talk about ending these endless wars is by letting our veterans who have been there, who have experienced our wars, lead us out of them. So our next speaker is a veteran of the war in Afghanistan. He's a Bronze Star winner. He's a West Point graduate. He's a member of Massachusetts Peace Action. And he is also the author of a book on his experiences, and it also touches on a lot of the issues that we've been talking about today. And that book is called Un American. Please give a warm welcome to Eric Edstrom. Thank you, everybody, for being out here. I'm going to share some stories, and they're going to be a bit heavy. And I'm going to bring you into the experience of what it is to be at war in Afghanistan and some of the long-term implications that we have to deal with as a result of it. My name's Eric Edstrom. I'm 35 years old and a veteran of the Afghan war. And like the rest of my generation of millennials, there has not been one single day in our adult life when our country has not been at war. Reflecting on the last 20 years, many things have changed. Sure, I graduated from Stoughton High School in West Point, served in direct combat in Afghanistan, where 25% of my platoon became casualties. Arriving on a U.S. tarmac after deployment did not stop those tragedies of war. One former soldier, 18 years old at the time of deployment, committed suicide. Another former soldier is serving life in prison in Oregon for murder. At my final duty station as part of the Honor Guard, I buried one of my best friends in Arlington National Cemetery and handed the folded American flag to his crying mother. I'm so sorry. War has always been grotesque, brutish, and dehumanizing. And maybe American citizens are willing to overlook and ignore soldiers' suffering so long as they believe that the millions of soldier years spent on deployment away from families, the horrific war injuries, were extracted as part of some noble sacrifice necessary and beneficial to their own protection. But America's war on terror has never met these criteria. Instead, year on year, legislators pump the military budget to obscene levels as if this were an acceptable substitute for a long lacking informed debate around foreign policy. Lobotomized patriots, as I call them, offer sad button Facebook emoticons and 20% off mattress day specials on Memorial Day, Amen. maintaining the ridiculous belief that by doing so they are being patriotic. But patting a soldier on the back and saying thank you as they're about ready to deploy to their fourth year long deployment in a war that everybody knows is self-defeating is not an act of patriotism, it is an act of betrayal. Betray. Betray. And there is no betrayal more intimate than being sent to kill or die for nothing by your own countrymen. I could use this moment speaking with you today to talk about the sheer futility of America's wars. I could talk to you about how on the ground I participated in a mission that was nicknamed Operation Highway Babysitter, in which the infantry would secure the road, allowing logistics convoys to resupply the infantry Totally just lost my uh, notes. That's okay. Well, these things happen. I'll improvise. You got this. Whoa. Yeah. And after resupplying the, uh, the the troops, this loop would happen in perpetuity. It was called the self-licking ice cream cone. Oh no. And the same thing would happen as well when we're talking about funding military missions, where 
literally, when you're trying to rebuild the roads in Afghanistan, a fraction, a large fraction, and the New York Times talked about it two days ago in an op-ed, 60% of funds that go to rebuilding the country end up back in the hands of the Taliban. So you are quite literally funding the Taliban, and you are funding them to continue killing soldiers like myself. And that is what we're looking at. It's a brutish thing. And I'm, I'm counting on all of you to continue the support to end these wars, to bring soldiers home. Thank you. When we think about sort of the cost of the military budget, you need to think about that this was done with the intention of providing security for people in the national territory of the United States. But in the process, you're looking, overlooking far greater threats like climate change. This is an opportunity cost where quite literally, by investing trillions of dollars, $6.4 trillion according to Brown University's Watson Institute, you are actually investing in more and fu uh, more future wars that are worse um, because we have failed to invest today in what actually matters. We are actually investing in future wars because we are not taking care of the problems that exist today. This loop will continue as it has been until we demand that it must stop. If your congressman does not cut the military budget, tell them to hit the bricks. 10% isn't even enough. 10% takes, takes you back to 2018 numbers, where the incremental increase in 2018 was larger than the entire military budget of Russia. One year increase. That's a one year increase. More than the entire military bu budget of Russia. So it needs to be deeper than 10%. And every dollar that you spend beyond what is necessary to actually defend the people in the country we live in from threats, and, and that is a real memory. There needs to be some form of national security. But every dollar beyond that is wasted because there are far larger threats and it needs to be rationalized. And rationalizing the military budget is not an act of being un-American or unpatriotic. Having open debate about what truly matters and allocating those resources accordingly requires courage and conviction. And we need legislators that can think openly and apply that with courage and conviction so that we can put our assets where they matter and get the development our country needs. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Give it up once more for Eric Ekstrom.